Money is something which is generally acceptable as a medium of exchange. The barter system prevailed before the evolution of money. But the difficulties of barter system compelled civilizations to invent the concept of money. The term money is derived from the word moneta. Moneta is another name of goddess Juno of Rome. Metal coins were introduced for the first time in the temple of goddess Moneta or Juno. In this chapter we will discuss barter system, money as a medium of exchange, modern forms of money, lending activities of banks, terms of credit, classification of credit, upliftment of the poor. Barter system Barter system is that system in which goods are exchanged for goods. For example, a cobbler would make shoes in return for wheat from the farmer, a farm worker got food grains as a reward for his labor and a doctor was paid in kind for his services. Double coincidence of wands Barter system prevails in the case of double coincidence of wands. Double coincidence of wands means what a person wants to sell is exactly what the other person wishes to buy. Thus, the barter system can only prevail when both the parties have agreed to sell and buy each other's produce. Lack of double coincidence of wants can make this impossible to implement. Since money acts as a medium of exchange, it solved the difficulties associated with the barter system. Difficulties of barter system Lack of double coincidence of wants Lack of common unit of value Lack of system for future payments Lack of system for storage of value Money as a medium of exchange Goods are bought and sold using money as the medium of exchange. A shoemaker can exchange his shoes for money. With this money he can buy wheat. Thus, with money coming in as the medium of exchange, the problems associated with the barter system were solved. People need currency for their day-to-day -day needs at a given point of time. People can easily exchange money for any commodity or service that they might want. Therefore, money is an intermediary in the process of exchange. That is why it is called medium of exchange. Modern Forms of Money In modern world, there are two forms of money, currency and deposits with banks. Currency as a modern form of money includes paper notes and coins. Deposits with banks People also hold money in the form of deposits with banks. Deposits are of two types. Demand deposits Time or fixed deposits. Lending activities of banks. Banks generate a major part of their incomes by lending money. The difference between interest paid on deposits and the interest charged on loans is the bank's profit. Banks keep only a small proportion of the public deposits as cash with themselves. In India, this proportion is about 15% of their cash deposits. There is a strong demand for loans for financing various economic activities. Banks receive higher rate of interest on loans as compared to the interest given by them to their depositors. In this way, banks mediate between those who have surplus funds and those who are in need of funds. In other words, Banks are intermediaries between depositors and borrowers. The main source of income of banks is the residue after interest is paid to depositors out of interest recovered from borrowers. Unity of loans to different people. Loans are not equally beneficial to everyone. Banks charges very high rates of interest on loans. In rural areas, the main demand for loan is for crop production. Farmers usually take crop loans at the beginning of the season and repay the loans after harvest. 
repayment of the loan is fully dependent on the income from farming. Crop failure due to natural calamities such as drought, floods, etc. can make it impossible to repay the loan. As a result, a farmer often has to sell part of his land to repay the loan. Thus, instead of helping these farmers, credit or loans drag them into a debt trap. This pushes the borrower into a situation from where recovery is very painful. Credit helps to increase earnings. Taking loans can benefit small traders, businessmen, entrepreneurs, students and many types of people in society. Loans are now available on reasonable terms from banks for building houses, purchasing cars, professional education etc. Although rates of interest are shooting up lately. Whether credit is useful or not depends on the risks inherent in the situation. Thus, if loans are used in a proper manner, they become a blessing to people. But if loans are misused or fail to generate surplus, they can become a serious life threat to the borrowers. Terms of Credit Loan agreements usually specify the rate of interest that the borrower must pay to the lender along with the repayment of the principal amount. In addition to this, lenders may demand collateral security against loans. Collateral security can be any tangible, valuable, readily and cashable asset that the borrower owns such as building, land, gold, vehicle, livestock, deposits with bank, LIC policies, etc. A borrower can assign his interest in such approved security in favor of a lender until the loan is repaid. If a borrower fails to repay the loan, the lender has the right to sell the collateral to adjust his loan plus overdue interest. Thus, mode of repayment, interest rate, borrower's contribution or margin, collateral and loan documentation in support thereof comprise the major terms of credit. Classification of Credit Credit can be classified as Formal Sector Credit and Informal Sector Credit. Formal sources of credit includes banks and cooperatives. Provides cheaper loans as compared to informal sector. Benefit the poor and will raise their standard of living. The Reserve Bank of India supervises its functioning. Informal sources of credit Includes money lenders, traders, employers, relatives, and friends. Play a vital role in the rural economy. Charges very high rates of interest on its lendings. Terms are highly expensive. Falls into a debt trap. Hinders the development of the nation. Comparison of formal and informal sources of credit. The following pie charts compare the formal and informal sources of credit. This chart shows that the informal sector is providing 85% of credit to poor households while formal sector is providing 15%. The informal sector is providing 53% credit to households with few assets while 47% of credit is provided by the formal sector. The informal sector is providing 28% credit to well-off households, 72% of credit is provided by the formal sector. The informal sector is providing 10% credit to rich households, while 90% of credit is provided by the formal sector. Upliftment of the poor The poor people are exploited by the informal credit sector. Therefore, it is necessary to uplift the poor for the development of the nation. Poor people can be uplifted by making self-help groups or SHGs. The idea is to organize rural poor, particularly women, into small SHGs. There are 15 to 20 members in a typical SHG, usually belonging to one neighborhood, who meet and save regularly. Members of SHGs can take small loans from the group itself to meet their needs at a reasonable rate of interest. After a year or two, if the group is regular in saving, it becomes eligible for availing of a loan from a bank. They help women to become financially self-reliant and regular meetings of the group 
provide a platform to discuss and act on many social evils. As such, providing credit to poor households from formal sources such as banks and cooperatives is important for overall development of the economy.